the Atlanta campaign, he was, a, he was a brigadier general. And of course, Atlanta, that charge, that battle there, led inexorably to the Franklin battlefield. On the day of the battle, John led his men into battle. He was in that one of those initial charges. And he was very quickly wounded in the shoulder. He was encouraged to leave the battlefield and seek treatment. But he was heard saying, no, I'm going to see my men through. Many years after the war, I received a letter from a man from Indiana who had been a lieutenant colonel in the Union Army. He witnessed my husband's death. Here's what he wrote. Your husband rode up to our works and cheering our men made an attempt to leap his horse over them. The horse fell upon the top of the embankment and the general was caught under him, the horse, pierced with bullets. As soon as the charge was repulsed, our men sprang over the works and lifted the horse while others dragged the general from under him. He was perfectly conscious and knew his fate. He asked for water, as all dying men do in battle, as the lifeblood drips from the body. One of my men gave him a canteen of water, while another brought an armful of cotton from an old gin nearby and made him a pillow. The general gallantly thanked them, and in answer to our, exp our expressions of sorrow at his sad fate, he said, it is the fate of a soldier to die for his country, and expired. Another Union soldier talked about how his superior officer tried to spare my husband's life. Our Colonel, he said, our Colonel Stewart tried hard to save the life of General John Adams and called to his men not to fire on him, but it was too late. Adams rode his horse over the ditch to the top of the parapet and undertook to grasp the old flag from the hands of the color sergeant when he fell, horse and all, shot by the cover guard. I was a re-enlisted veteran and went through 27 engagements, he said. I'm sure that Franklin was the hardest fought field that I ever stood upon. John's body was removed here to Carnton, but it was too late. He was laid on the porch and later taken to Pulaski to his family and buried there, and he rests there still today. I never remarried. In the years to come, I lived with my parents until they died. And then I lived with one of my sons until in 1905, I died. My youngest son died in 1946. I wanna thank you for coming out and for remembering all of our sacrifices.